up right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Kevin Harvick brushed the wall early. You see the damage on the right side of his car. Hung out in the back for much of the race, and now he has raced his way all the way to victory lane. Matt Yoakum. The last time the Shell Penn's own team went to victory lane was the all-star race back in May of 2007. Before that, the Daytona 500 perseverance really paid off tonight for you and this team. Well, the first thing I want to do is thank all the fans, man. If you don't enjoy that, that was uh, some wild racing. Uh, I got to thank Sprint, uh, Shell, Pennzoil, Coca-Cola, uh, Ream. Let me let me make sure I hadn't done this in a while. SKF Freightliner champion, Snap on uh, everybody for helping us, and let, once again the fans. Just everybody is just awesome, and what a race, man! That was wild as heck there at the end. Well, Kevin Harvick takes home the big money. What a way to start Speed Weeks 2009. Big hug from his wife, Delena, and the rest of the team gathering in. <laughs> Daryl, what a way to start off DirecTV Speed Week. You know what I love? You just come down here and you bend a fender on your car and you're doomed, man. That's it. You're out of the race. Now they bounce off each other. They bounce off the wall. And look at that thing. Looks like they've been running at Martinsville. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love is the fact that in a 75-lap race, we had 15 different leaders with 23 lead changes. I think that's just a sneak preview for what we'll see in the Daytona 500. Heck, yeah, that pays a million and a half to win. Tonight's 200000 Wow. <laughs> and don't feel too bad for Jamie McMurray. He finished second, and that four-tire change for Tony Stewart got him up to third. Well done. Steve? Well, Jamie, tell us about that shootout. That was some wild racing tonight. Well, it was. I, uh, I moved up and blocked the 24 and the 48. And when I moved up to block him, I was just waiting, you know, to get wrecked. And when Kevin got the run um, on my outside, I moved up, and I thought I was far enough up that he couldn't fit between me and the and the wall. And you know, when the guy's coming, that he's going to dart back to the inside if he can't go to the outside. And I was trying to make my car as wide as possible. But uh, good night for the Crown Royal car, um, Donnie Wingo's first race. I uh, really uh, really excited. It's fun to watch, Jamie. Let's go to Krista. All right, we're with Jimmy Johnson. Of course, this race is the one that's all about the fun. Sunday, the 500, that's the one that's all about the daydreams. Everyone dreams about that. What did you learn for the 500? Uh, there was a lot that we learned tonight. Um, it's nice to be back in the cars. Uh, that intermission, we were able to try some stuff. So I think all the teams that were in this race certainly benefited from that. Granted, the track's going to change a lot and get much slicker as the week wears on. But uh, tonight was a good night for the Lowe's Mbala. Unfortunately, it's steaming and, and uh, torn up behind you, but we had a lot of fun tonight. He hopes to be celebrating on Sunday, Dick Bergen. Tony Short finishes third with his brand new team. Satisfied with that? Yeah, I'll take that for a debut night. So uh, wasn't the prettiest third place, but uh, we were in the right right spot at the right time finally. So uh, we know what we need to work on this week for the 500, and we'll uh, we got a good start though. Good for you, Chris Myers. Thanks, uh, Dick Bergen and uh, Jeff Hammond. What did we learn tonight uh, about a week from tomorrow in the Daytona 500? Junior said we're gonna we're gonna take some things from this experience. Uh, Happy Harvick, 71 races since his last Cup win, of course, an All Star win, and this a Budweiser shootout win at Daytona. Well, as always, it's gonna wind up being positioning and handling. We saw tonight how important tires were. You come in at the right time, get the right tires, right position. You got an excellent chance to win. And the main thing is, I think Daryl and Larry were talking about it. The way I looked at it. The these hounds, I mean, they were running over top of each other for the hamburger they were going after tonight. Well, next week, it's for filet mignon. So it's <laughs> going to be a wild, wild 500 race, mile race next weekend. All right, filet mignon. I like mine well done, by the way. We started with 28 cars, the most ever in the Budweiser shootout. We finished with 13 tomorrow. The action continues here from Daytona on Fox, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 Pacific, qualifying for the front row position, battling for the great American race. Yeah, you don't want to miss that because, again, it sets the stage for this 500 as well as everything else that goes on the remainder of speed weeks. But, I mean, tonight, hey, what a way to kick it off. 14 leaders, 23 different lead changes, and eight cautions, all Budweiser shootout records. Next on Fox, late local news, except on the West Coast. And again, a week from tomorrow, 2 o'clock Eastern, the running of the Daytona 500 and the Great American Race. Promotional considerations provided by... So Kevin Harvick and wife Delana in the top 40 of uh, NASCAR's uh, most beautiful people. And he was beautiful tonight, pulling into victory lane, winning the lengthiest and the most crowded ever Budweiser shootout. Dale Earnhardt Jr. led 24 laps. Carl Edwards led 11. But in the end, Kevin Harvick for Jeff Hammond, for Dirk Spedley, for Bentley Elliott.
I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for tuning in for NASCAR on Fox. Have a great weekend.